Oh, my hair looks like a mess. Hello, booktube. It's Leah here, and today I am bringing you a review of Radiance by Catherine M. Valente. Now, I have been slowly working my way through all of Catherine M. Valente's novels, and this is the latest one I read and completely loved it, and I'm really excited to talk to you about it. Radiance is a multi-layered exploration of the impact the disappearance of a filmmaker's daughter has on him, as well as the people who were close to her. It's set in an alternative deco punk reality where humanity has colonized the solar system by the early 20th century. The story unravels part documentary, part fictional recounting through film transcripts, interviews, script rewrites, and the imagination of her father, Percival Unk, as he tries to write a film that answers the question, what happened to his daughter Severin? And by doing so, answer the bigger question, what makes the perfect ending to the story of someone's life. In my Goodreads review, I mentioned that this book is both hugely epic and incredibly small all at the same time. I think it's a very difficult book to explain because it is so layered. There's kind of the surface story, which is the mystery, if that's what you want to call it, of Severin Angst's parents, but it's layered throughout philosophy, meta, references to several different classical mythologies, the alternate reality in which it's take, it takes place, our reality. It's just, it's an incredibly complex novel that I very quickly fell in love with as I was reading it. That being said, it's really not for the faint of heart. And I can understand that a lot of people aren't going to like it because it's very off the beaten track. And so with this review, I kind of want to highlight some of the things about it that I love and that I think you might find interesting or that to help steer you towards either reading it or not reading it. Because you could have either a very positive reaction to reading this or a very meh reaction, I think. Very fundamentally, this novel is about story. It's a story about story. It's a story about structure in story and storytelling and how we tell stories, both fictional and quote unquote, non-fictional. And because it's so deeply rooted in storytelling, specifically film storytelling, I mean, it, the entire book is narrated by directors, writers, cinematographers, actors, paparazzi. Because that is the case, the way film stories are told is very vital to this book. So one of the first things that you need to be aware is that the style in which the story is told is kind of avant-garde. There are several sections in here which are interview transcripts or scripts, like literal scripts with camera direction, set dressing directions, dialogue. And only about half the book is actually what you would consider traditional fictional narrative. So if you don't like alternative forms, this might not be for you. But as someone who is generally not a very big fan of really alternative forms, like I really love movies, I really like stage plays, but I don't like reading a script just to read it. This, however, was extremely enjoyable. So so I think Catherine Valente, one of her, one of her real great talents is writing exactly to the form or the genre of her book. And her voice is always spot on for whatever the genre is. And so her scripts in here, her script snippets, her transcripts, they're all just so beautifully written. And it makes sense in the context of who is telling the story. Like I said, it's told from the perspective of directors and actors and script writers. So it makes sense that when they are trying to tell their stories, it would be in those forms. If that hasn't scared you off. <laughs> I keep wanting to make a comparison between this and Illuminae, but I haven't actually read Illuminae. I just know that it is a, another alternative form novel that uses documents, found footage, transcripts, interviews and stuff to tell the story too. And so that's why I, I I, I want to make the comparison, even though I don't know if the stories are anything at all. Like, I have a feeling that they're not. But if that sort of thing doesn't completely turn you off. Another thing that's great about this book, and which could be, again, a love it or hate it for the reader, is the fact that it's told in an extremely non-linear narrative. Which I know non-linear structures, some people really struggle with them. So that might be something you don't want to dive into. I personally love epic stories that are told non-linearly. I love having little pieces given to me and I love watching the way they kind of sew themselves together. And then my battery died. 
So I think the angle of this might have changed. But continuing what I was saying, so I've been trying to think of answers to the question, if you like blank, you might like Radiance. But it's been really quite difficult because there's honestly nothing that I've watched or read that really compares to this book. But I have a few ideas. These aren't gonna be necessarily super obvious comparisons, but bear with me. Okay, so first of all, I think it helps to have an appreciation, not just of science fiction or alternative histories, but also of deco punk and to some extent, magical realism. All of those elements are present in this book. So riffing on that, when I say deco punk, one of the best examples of that genre I could think of is actually Bioshock, the games. And I'm not saying that the plot of Bioshock is anything at all like the plot of this, but they both have somewhat dark, creepy elements to them. But if you like the Bioshock aesthetic, I think you'll really like the aesthetic in Radiance. And then if you've ever, this is another video game. I feel like this probably tells you something about the kind of video games I play, but if you've ever played The Secret World, which is an online MMO, that's very much inspired by Lovecraft. There are elements of like Cthulhu and old gods and realities pressing in against one another and things, I mean, I, like, I don't want to, I don't want to spoil anything too much, but like things, elements, consciousnesses, aliens, um, magic kind of pressing in on our reality and interacting with our reality in sometimes negative ways, kind of creepy is something that is present in Radiance. I mean, not old gods, old gods are not in Radiance, but um, I don't know, that kind of foreboding sense of something bigger beyond your comprehension lurking just out of the corner of your eye is kind of present, like that 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 feeling. Another thing, and I'm, I'm hesitant to make this comparison, but if you like the film adaptation, or if you like films like adaptation, it's a coffin film. And it's literally about a writer trying to adapt a novel into a script. But that's not that's not really why I'm bringing it up. I'm more bringing it up because adaptation is very much structurally, narratively about how to write a story. And that theme is also very present in Radiance. So if you find the idea of creators in a book or a film trying to puzzle out what it means to create a story, to compose a story, and to convey a story to an audience, if you find that horribly pretentious, then this might not be for you. If you like that sort of thing, if you like that kind of discussion though, I think you'll really like Radiance because one of the elements in Radiance, one of the central themes of it is that Severinunk's father is trying to create a movie to tell the story of her disappearance. There are about five or six parts of the book and they're called, and each part represents a different draft basically, of his attempt at writing the story. You see that Percival Unk tries to tell the story in a different genre. So he starts it out as he's telling her story as a noir, and then he's trying to tell her story as a, a gothic horror. And then he's trying to tell her story more as a, a fairy tale. And as his attempt, his focus, his tonal focus shifts, the tone of those sections shifts as well. And, and it's all a very kind of layered commentary on how different genres tell story, tell the same story or could tell the same story. I love that. <laughs> I mean, I kind of love adaptation, the film, despite myself. <laughs> so I, I'm because I just I love that kind of meta commentary. And Valente does such a flawless, committed job to exploring the different voices that you encounter in different genres of writing. And lastly, I, and I think this goes for any work, at least everything that I've read by Valente so far, is that you really do have to have an appreciation for, or, or, or an openness towards magical realism whenever you start to read one of her stories, because mag magical realism is really a strong underpinning in everything I've read by her. Not everything is gonna get explained. There is something beyond reality occurring and you may be witnessing only a fragment of what's happening. And the, the, the author 
the story, the characters, they're not going to sit there and lay out all the pieces for you. They're not going to explain everything that's happening. They're not going to tell you this is real and this part's not real. They're not even going to say, oh, we lied. Because I know that, that that's a common tool people use when they use unreliable narration. And, I, and I'm mentioning this because I think one of the things, one of the criticisms or one of the complaints I see in a lot of people who rate this book down and, and rate down some of our other books like Deathless is that they didn't get it or they didn't understand what had happened. It wasn't explained well enough. Again, as a reader, I like being left to make my own decisions about what happened, about what it means. I, I enjoy that. Kind of another example of a television show is the Netflix original series The OA, which is very, very much a magical realism story with a sinister sci-fi element to it. Or what happens in the course of the series, and I'm not going to spoil it, but there's an inciting incident at the beginning of the series and the rest of it unfolds kind of as a story where the char the, the character at the center of the mystery is telling other people her story leading up to the present. And there is always this pervasive feeling of question whether or not is what she's saying accurate because like we can see it but that doesn't necessarily make it real because it's still just a story she's telling us. Or is she telling us a story that's actually being filtered through a fictional lens for her to try to make the story less monstrous for herself? Is the story being changed in translation? And at the end, we don't get an answer. Like at the end of season one, there is no answer. Things happen. And then, you know, it fades black. And I think that's one of the central tenets of magical realism is being presented with, with series of information. And it's it's really left up to you as the reader or the, the viewer to make your own decisions about what pieces of it are absolutely true, what pieces of it aren't. Does it matter if you know what is absolutely true or what absolutely happened? This review got super long and rambly, despite my best efforts. And I uh, got a little off topic there as I talked about magical realism and science fiction. I can't help myself. I really love it. I think it's a really beautiful book. I want to highly recommend it to everyone, but I think it's it's a little niche. That's not to say I don't recommend it. I would definitely recommend it if it sounds interesting to you. If you do pick it up, stick with it. Like the first 100 pages might seem kind of intimidating because the style is very different from probably what you might be used to reading. And there's a lot of information in it. Give it a chance because I think it has the potential to blow your mind a little bit. It definitely blew my mind. It was a joy to read. And yeah, that's my rambly review of Radiance by Catherine M. Valente. Check it out. And let me know if this review was at all helpful, if it inspired you to read the book or to check it out or not. I'm really trying to get better at this whole book review thing because I, I, like, I really want to wreck books, especially newer books, because this is only two, a 2015 release. I really want to wreck things that I read that I think are really, really good. And I'm, I'm also hoping to do an entire author spotlight on Valente once I've read most of her books. And if you've already read this, let me know what you thought of it down in the comments. We can have a little discussion about it. I'd love to know if you enjoyed it or if you didn't. <laughs> Anyways, I will see you guys all later. Goodbye.